for the morning, and it's all about cybersecurity in Belize. We're joined by three representatives of the Belize Information Technology Systems. We have here with us Harry Noble Sr., and he is a technical officer, and with him is his son, Glenn Noble, and he is the networking officer with BITS, and uh, also here with us is the granddaughter and daughter, and her name is Addie Noble. As you can probably tell, this is a family business uh, of persons who obviously love technology, so we're happy to have you here with us to talk about cybersecurity. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No problem. Let's jump straight into it. Cyber security. What is cyber security? Cyber security is protecting you against crimes that are committed in cyberspace. Yeah. So what we find, what we have found, and because of my experience with the Belize Police Department, I used to work 15 years with them, and I used to see the trend in crimes. Basically, the crimes, there were crimes against persons, crimes against property, and crimes against the state. And what we found, there's been an increase, these crimes getting a component of technology, of cyber technology in it. There's an average of three crimes reported in Belize every hour. Wow. Two of those crimes will have a cyber technology component. They will use a computer, a phone, and even things like GPS. Mm. So we find the technology has crept into the crime space, so cyberspace is now another area where crime has just moved. There are crimes against persons in cyberspace, crimes against property in cyberspace, crimes against the state in cyberspace. So it's just another area where crime has moved on. And it's a thing that people are not aware. That is why we want to push this, that awareness, education, training. Because what we have found is one of the weakest links in cyber crimes, how most cyber crimes is because attack the person, the people, mm -hmm. social engineering, phishing skills. They send you an email, sending you from your bank. You can't trust this, all these things you need, and then ask you give me your password and name, and then you will find three hours later your bank account is Empty. missing eleven thousand dollars. Yeah. So we see this. So we see all these crimes happening. We used to see it happening on the persons. And then on the businesses, funny enough, the person crime seem to be the bigger crimes, yet the crimes that have the biggest impact is on business. Right? So money-wise, business get affected, and we see the same pattern in cyberspace. When did we start paying attention, real attention, to cyber crime? A lot. The, the problem is that we have not been paying attention to cybercrime, but been growing. Yeah. Given the way technology has been growing, if you look at technology in telecoms in Belize, 1902, the first magnetophone, where people are just called one 1902. line 1902. 1902, there was the first magnetophone put in Consejo in Corozal, so we could communicate with the rest of the world mm. through Mexico. And then 1973, cable and wireless came and put in a telephone switch in Belize City and later on in Belmopan. So we had like automatic telephones. It was a privilege to have you wait four, five years to have a telephone because the telephone exchanges were saturated so they don't have no more. So do you get a telephone? It was a long thing. They would have won. I joined BTL around 1975. At that time, there were like 4,000 customers in the entire country, I believe. 1987. Sorry, 1990, we started to introduce cellular phone network, a phone called AMPS, Advanced Mobile Phone Networks. You had a big phone, we call a Borola brick. You could take that and whap somebody with it. <laughs> that was the first mobile phone. Yeah. And the first cell phone call was made in a BTL boardroom using a cell phone, and the chair would take call his house, and they say, call the states, and call the states. And then we started with AMPS. Then in 19. 87, they are both, we had a, we call the digital telephone, the GSMs. I would say that is when cybercrime took off because we had digital technology that allowed you to do text before it's only voice. Mm -hmm. When you have technology, we have text and we have data. And people starting send people. Fraudulent out, information. Fraudulent information, attacks against the person, insulting you by text. 
yeah. thinking Bole. that it couldn't be trained. Yeah. So we start seeing that trend. And then when you go to the police and we start seeing the crimes and then we start to see the technology being used. Mm. So cyber crime has been with us before. We had the first original kind of cyber crime was what we call the Nigerian scam. You get a fax. I am a Nigerian prince and I need somebody to give ten million dollars. <laughs> Send me your bank account. Unfortunately people are still gullible to to act like that. This it does not have to be a Nigerian <laughs> yes, prince. This is what we're saying. Our weakest link is people because yeah. some they don't understand we need to be aware and trained that don't trust everything you see on the net and yeah. people intrinsically tend to see if it's common net it got to be right so you need to be questioning it and use common sense somebody will give a million dollars you get your account they want empty it out they don't yeah. give nothing i know i know of somebody unfortunately that fell almost fell victim to one of those attacks back in the days uh unfortunately the individual really thought that this person was uh, somebody significant from Nigeria and um, <laughs> that uh, they were in need and this individual was trying to turn the earth over to get those finances uh, but uh, the, somebody with more understanding of the situation uh, intervened. Let's, let's move over to Mr. Glenn. We'll bring you into the conversation Mr. Glenn. Uh, if you would share with us a bit about uh, your observation or more so how is it that, what is it that's in place in this day and age to tackle cybercrime and deal with that issue? Um, I believe though the, the best thing for preventing cybercrime though is the person themselves getting training, learning um, how to look for, for crimes and especially like the phishing one. They send you a website, you have to look at the website. If it's spelled wrong, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, changing your passwords. Uh, regularly changing it to, to complicated passwords. They're not simple things. Mm -hmm. um, not using important stuff on computers that are not yours. You, you don't want to do banking in somebody else's machine yeah. or at an internet cafe or something like that. Then. Mm. So the best protection um, for individuals is just learning a couple steps and, and what, how to protect yourself. Are there uh, methods to detect early whether or not uh, uh, you are uh, being targeted? Uh, yes, there is software right. that you can install <coughs> on your computer, we call them anti-malware devices, and they are getting smarter now with artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they can track patterns and identify this is a cyber attack, this is spam, this is phishing. So the software, the anti-malware software, which you can put in your equipment. But we need to just backtrack a little bit. Yeah, what we, we have found that with cyber crime, they tend to attack like three what we call surfaces. And the biggest one is the people with social engineering tricking you on. The other one is your equipment. Sometimes they attack your equipment. They drop a uh, software in your equipment that encrypts everything on your computer. It's called that's what they call ransomware. That's we saw that with virus. I think we saw that with BWS. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. That's exactly. Last that year. is the tip of the iceberg. We only seeing about one tenth of what's really happening. A lot of people have, don't tell us. We know of a lot of cases where we are called upon, where the people are hit. They because the same thing. They get the ransomware computer. He encrypts the data on your computer, and then somebody puts a change the wallpaper and said. You can get your data back if you send me 200,000 in yeah. bitcoins. Right. Mm. So it's not being traced. Right? So there is attack of the equipment itself, your computer, they can attack your phone, they can attack your tablet. They can they attack your data. They attack and, they attack your and the data. data. Data really is the most important thing you have in your phone, in your tablet, in your computer, in your in server. Your because mm -hmm. you can buy a new computer, buy a new phone, buy a new router, but you can't buy your data, only yeah. you have it. Right. Mm -hmm. And for a business, someone like BL, nobody has the data of their business. So data is really the most important thing. So what we focus for as bits is to try to protect that data mm -hmm. so that you don't lose it. So you say people, you say hardware. People, equipment. Equipment. And we say data. Data. And then the infrastructure. Because sometimes they attack the network. You know, in 2005, BTL 
the country was crippled, left without any communication for three days. There was kind of attack on infrastructure, but that was because the workers decided they were fighting the BTL and the worker union literally had a denial of service attack on the telecommunications system. What they did was to send a busy signal to all telephones in the country, so well, tell it's not working. At the time, I was working with police, I was also a public utility commissioner, and I was called in around with a team to work it, and we saw the problem, we were able to resolve it, just taking it. But then the workers took on a move, his admission. They literally took an axe, cut the fiber optic link between here and Belmopan. That totally isolated the country. You couldn't make a long distance call, you couldn't make an international call. Mm. So that is how your infrastructure gets. Today, you don't need to cut the fiber optic. Yeah. You just need to send an attack on it, a denial of service attack, just saturate it hmm. with calls and you bring it down and you cripple it. So let's 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 get Adi really right. quickly in the conversation. Adi, you are a programming officer of Four Bits. Let's talk to us a bit about your involvement as it relates to cybersecurity. Okay, so um, as you can see, I will first we're just trying to spread awareness because we're just starting off the business as you can see the um the whole technology is evolving. We're getting mm -hmm. more and more advanced. We use AI a lot. Have like have you used ChatGPT? There's AI to like manipulate your pictures, your voice, all that. So for now, we're just wanting to spread awareness to everybody so they know like to protect their data, their yeah. assets. Mm -hmm. You know, so you won't be you won't fall into yeah. like one of those cyber threats. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're starting off so, with. So so you're seeing you all are seeing how AI is changing the playing field mm -hmm. uh, in cyber security, cyber attacks. But it's also changing the playing field in terms of how we, as users, can secure ourselves. Yes. It's a two-edged sword. Yeah. Right? It will cut you, it will help you. Mm -hmm. Right. So just it can be used for attack because with AI, I can come in and pretend to be any one of you guys. I'm calling from OYE. Can you um, send us some money or yeah. whatever? And I can send you a video. Look like you can create you and copy your voice and put things. So it's allowing you to be able to impersonate or attack. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the technology is also evolving so that it can detect, okay, this person is video, but look at his eyes, his eyes don't move. So he's not a real person, right? Or the attack that you're getting of software in your computer that's trying to access all your files. Cut that off. So the software is getting so smart that when it detects an anti-malware, whether it's a virus, spyware, or anything, shut it down. Shut down your computer in the system and say, you have a problem, tell you a message. Do you want me to go and scan it and so and stop it down? So should all households that have, well, I'd say I, I, I'm sort of thinking now because in essence, almost all households have a computer mm -hmm. because you have a phone. Yeah. Even if you don't <laughs> have a desktop or a <laughs> laptop, you have a phone. So every household should be concerned about cybersecurity and the sort of data and the people you allow access to into your homes, correct? Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm here thinking though, uh, uh, Mr. Noble, you, are, you have a, an Apple device on your table there. And oftentimes it was said that uh, Apple devices are, well, well, they can't get viruses or they, they can't be uh, attacked the way other um, um, devices can. Is that a myth? No, if you believe that, I have a business in bridge where I could sell you. <laughs> okay. Any device can be affected. What we don't hear much about Apple Active Device is simply because of the market share. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The most common operating system used by people and businesses is the Windows operating system. If I'm a hacker, I'm a cybercrime, I'm not going with a part where only one thing I could thief. I'm going with about hundreds, so I attack the Windows operating system. And there's also a certain element of truth in the Apple system. There's also an Apple terminal in your Android system. Because what is happening, Apple, Android, and another operating system known as Linux, mm -hmm. they derive from Unix. It's built on a different system from Windows. Windows is an operating system that basically once you get into the computer, you can do anything on that computer. With Linux, Android, or Apple, you get into a certain folder, you can't go into another directory, another folder. It's the nature of the operating system. They are all derivatives of Unix, which is a different operating system that 
in a way it sandbags you. So when you go in, you can only stay in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what can we do uh, as phone users to protect ourselves, uh, to consider security? We store our banking information on our phone. We store our family photos on our phones. Our phones have our locations most of the time. So there's a lot of passwords on our phones stored mm -hmm. as well. And we go around, perhaps I guess, vis um, visiting websites, downloading apps. How can we better secure ourselves on our phone? Can you well, answer, Abby? Well, for one, of course, you have to do your backup. Remember, always keep your backups and everything. Because you never know, you could use your phone, somebody could take your information. Uh -huh. So you have to keep your backups. And then there's your password. Never go sharing your passwords. And then always use a strong password. Or you can use two-factor authentications, mm. or even multi-factor authentications, so nobody could get in. That, mm -hmm. that's, those are some good advice. Do you have any tips? Uh, no, that's that pretty much for, for civilians. That's pretty. It, it gets more complicated for businesses because yes, it's, it's and that's where I wanted to take the yeah. conversation for for businesses or business owners that are maybe tuning in and thinking, how can I access the services uh, to ensure that my information are protected? Can they source bits for that? Yes, we look at what we call hardening your equipment, hardening your computer by protecting it with anti malware, hardening your network by using virtual private networks, using a stronger encryption in your routers and modems that you have. Train your people because that's a way they want to get to. That's always the weakest link. You the can, people. <laughs> the I can people. protect yeah. my equipment with yeah. anti malware. Yeah. I can use a VPN on my network. We but when my person, updated, then they get my person, I go to all of this, and then I give somebody my credit card number, my username, and my password, and then he can log into my network and then do a ransomware attack. Mm -hmm. Most of these ransomware attacks came in because some user went to a website where they are giving you a free program, mm. yeah. a free game. Yeah. You download it, and as you download it, this guy drops in this particular software and it starts working. Mm -hmm. And it might take a week or a month to do that you don't, before you notice that he goes to all your files, encrypts them by one by one, and then sometimes he sends it to his cloud server so that he owns your data. When you try to get it in there, sometimes it's encrypted, you can't get it, but he has your backup. So he says, send me so much money, and I will give you back a key or give you back access to your data. Mm -hmm. And I would say 80% or more of these breaches are caused by people. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we need people to be aware that this can exist. We need to people to be educated as to if you get an email that asking you for a username, a password, and saying I'm your boss, go ask him if they send you because somebody could be impersonating. Yeah. yeah. And then lastly, a backup. Because um, if yes. it ever happens, you have it backed up. You don't have to pay for something that's yours already. Yes. So, so uh, let us know, if persons want to uh, reach out to you all uh, as a team for consultation, or if they want to have your voices in to uh, do some, give some advice maybe to uh, teams or schools mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, how is it that they can reach out to you all? Oh, well, we have a website. Yeah. Um, it's called bitsbusy.com. And you could there you could contact any of us because there's actually six members of mm -hmm. us. There's three, three of us are here today, and the other three are at their okay. homes working. So okay. you could reach um, us through our website. Is there a phone number? Or yes. That's a part of security. You don't uh, yeah. have a <laughs> phone the number. Website. Everything I'm is on the website. There's a phone number. There's an email. Yeah. Okay. And then we have, in the act, among our members, we have guys with different backgrounds from mm. high school to associate to bachelors to guys with masters in IT mm -hmm. right, who have been working in IT. Collectively, our team has more than 100 years working in IT. <laughs> Yes. Because I'm, I'm more than 40. This guy has about 25. She has about 10. The other guys have about 20. So collectively, we've been on this and working on just about every aspect. We built networks from scratch. He used to own an internet service provider company in San Ignacio. He was providing service to Benkis, Sokots, San Ignacio, Santa Elena, Bully Tree. So we built networks from scratch. Mm -hmm. And huge networks. 
Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for stopping right. by. Uh, again, we want to remind our viewers that if you're interested in getting any of the services from Belize Information Technology Systems, you can reach out to them on their website. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you for having you all having the best. Us. Thank you for yeah, having us. All right, we're going to take our final break. And when we come back, it's all about Glazed Out Belize Cooking Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back.